Hello everybody, it's Duty Paid and today we have a, uh, well can you tell what it is, it's a, a PSU. Now yesterday I went for a walk um, around my local area just to like to have a little walk, see what's going on and uh, I came across a, um, it's a skip used by a uh, company that rents garages and what happens is is people leave stuff in the garage after they rented it and they come along just clear it all out throw it in the skip and one thing was a computer now I will insert picture here and this is the computer and a few more pictures I'll probably include now I was going to film me stripping it down but this computer smelt um, smelt a bit bad I'm not sure if it's been out in the rain it didn't look too bad but I completely gutted it. The case was how you see it, or have seen it, depending on my editing skills. Didn't have any of side panels and the top panels off. So I took out the components, put them to one side last night, and then I'm going to have a look at cleaning them. And the first one up is the power supply, because I don't have a spare power supply at the moment. Now you're saying, Dewey, you're crazy. You can get them for like sort of 20 pounds. Just order one in. Well, yeah, I could do that. But I thought we'd have a look at this. Now this was in the machine, um, upside down, well, with the fan facing down, um, and just a mesh, um, open mesh grill. So it was sucking in all the uh, dust from the floor. And this is how I found it. Let that focus. If you uh, <laughs> saw if you're eating dinner or anything, as you can see, it's. Um, Kate would be a good word, thick with dust. Now, this isn't just simply dust, this is more than dust. The quickest way of cleaning that, I think, is with a hoover. Now, you're saying duty hoover on electrical components? Well, yeah. But if, it, if we open this and we find it's completely rusty, then uh, we will move on. So, a little bit worried because you might see the um, warranty void if removed. I did have lib net, but and that screw has been turned, so we're not too sure. Obviously, I don't think there's much warranty on it. Internally, it doesn't look too bad, but we are talking voltage and safety. So, we will uh, just hoover this up today and see what happens. I'll probably play some music while the uh, vacuum cleaner's working.
So, that looks a bit cleaner now. I should have got a uh, screwdriver. Um, that would have been the next step. So, screws on the front. Looks like it's sort of just a clamp shell one. But as you can see, just uh, over with a hoover. Quite a good little brush one. Um, I'm not sure who makes this. Zao Man? I've never heard of Zao Man before. Not one I would pick out. Total 450 watts, which sounds a um, bit low for the computer. I should be alright. But what we do is we will uh, can see more dust inside, so we will crack that open now. Be right back with a screwdriver. Okay, so I've dug out the old Mega Pro. You've probably seen this before. I love this thing, especially if you're working on computers. They always say that you only need a one um, screwdriver to build a computer, and uh, which is kind of true. You could probably uh, do that. Do I say that, or did I just make that up? But if you're making computers, if you're thinking of building your first computer, it's fairly. Uh, self-explanatory you probably won't get everything perfect like you see the uh, big channels where they uh, build a computer and they all have the hard line water cooling rig set up your own budget might not even be uh, able to stretch that far so remember remember power supplies can be dangerous obviously high voltage sides and stuff so uh, a little bit of caution so this is the inside of the fan and that's what a lot of people don't realize outside of a fan you think oh, outside of a fan think, oh yeah that's pretty clear a little bit of dust bottom of the fins and this what will decrease your uh, fan life because what will happen is the dirt will build up okay equally but it will increase the um, inertia rate and the spinning and that's what will put extra effort and wear on the bearings until the point where your fans start going clog 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 and so forth so let's get the uh, hoover back onto that I might show you that I might not I think you've seen a hoover work before Another good tip, an old paintbrush. You can uh, get that in there to uh, dislodge any uh, dirt. The trouble is when dirt gets hot, it kind of uh, tends to stick to things. Just be careful of uh, knocking components. You don't want to press too hard, but there's not much in the power supply to, uh, it's all pretty beefy. Because these are big heat sinks or the uh, switching MOSFETs, transistors, power transistors. So they need to be cooled. And if they're completely uh, blocked up, that's going to give you cooling problems. And a lot of old computers will uh, slow down. And uh, this is why I'm never a fan of laptops work brilliantly to begin with and yeah sure they can get gummed up with the old freeware and the extra hard drives and well not extra hard drives but when you're uh, installing and uninstalling loads of things registry problems and so forth and you can normally speed up a uh, hard drive or a computer by formatting the hard drive and reinstalling the OS but other times it's just a case of a new laptop. But 
not oops, not many people think that the uh, their laptop is getting slow because the CPU is overheating. And I've opened plenty of laptops where the uh, fan is just chock a block. And uh, you clear them out and uh, give them a new lease of life. Now you can probably see the sort of dust bunnies I'm pulling out of here. Is dust a fire hazard? Hmm. Not, probably not. I don't know the uh, combustible temperature of these dust bunnies. But you could have a problem where something might pop and it would just be a flash in the pan. These are normally designed for redundancy. If they do pop, self-contained. But obviously if you've got a uh, material that is uh, combustible next to it. What I'd probably do is just pop this one out as well. I might do that all off camera because otherwise you're watching me uh, pick this apart. So uh, let's cycle that a few times and I'll do a few other checks and then we will turn it on see if anything happens. Okay so we're back. Now I have um, stripped everything down and I have cleaned the fan, which is a lot better. Obviously uh, the shield, I was going to give this a coat of paint, but it's just 1st of February today and it is cold out. So that would probably take till July to uh, finish. I have a spare cable tie, which I'll show you in a minute. And hopefully you can see now, a bit some more light on the subject. I popped the uh, power board out and I cleaned um, with a brush right down there. Oh, I can still see one. They always get to one. One or two doesn't really matter, but the uh, top bins were clogged. See, you always still find another one, no matter how careful you are. And uh, cleaned it all out so there's no dust down there. And also, I checked the board, make sure there was no. Uh, water and water in it and stuff like that. So we're going to reassemble this on uh, screen. Now always be careful with these because they kind of have a different way up. You can easily put them wrong, wrong way down and that will uh, be almost touching if not the actual fan. So always check those things and have that the right way up. You can see we might be able to see the difference and clearance. Uh, that went that way. So fan headers there. So we just marry that up. And this is a bit of a juggling act. And only best to get that in situ first. And then your fan on top. And these use the standard screws that you find on the back of a case or something. They like a sort of self tapper which goes into uh, these things. Some kind of jig for this would be handy. Not too much off screen. Oh, one over mine. Probably best to start it in the old sandwich fashion. So, you take your screw, pass that through the hole, take the uh, fan blade, and pass that through while holding the screw. And then take your fan, that's the way we wanted it, and then start screwing it together. And don't do it all the way up tight, but it's a good way of having a third hand on these things. Then you can rearrange it all, just with that little bit of play you have. It'll all fit back into place. Wiggle that into situ. Drop another fan. Drop another screw in. And just now we've got two in. We can now just double check. 
that it's all in line. It's good to even turn this on and it might not work. But I think we, uh, it was a wet old day. There's also a toolbox in there with some really old um, sockets that had all gone rusty. <laughs> One end of the toolbox was uh, ice and pulled out this sort of socket and it almost pulled out this sort of socket and it kind of looked like a sort of um, socket ice lolly. So I had to cut off a cable tie and that was here and I found a suitable replacement and that holds the main loom of the cables in so you want to get that behind not absolutely necessary but best thing to do is keep things in a similar condition Sorry for the people now have to construct these in the uh, factory somewhere. I think there's a machine that will put a cable tie around. Make sure, oops, oh, I had it in. My hand completely blocking it. So that's back there. Probably has a strain relief. I always carry these around by the cables. Shouldn't do that. Tap that off. Now the cable, pretty easy. Just setting that back there. Make sure the uh, plastic on the side, the little protection bit is not up. You can see, look like that they sprayed these almost in there, uh, in situ. Now uh, we'll have to dig out a power cable for this. I've got one laying around. Get the little power supply screws from the top. These never line up on the cases. You always need a bit of wrangling. Probably wouldn't use this for anything else and just test the machine. There are some interesting parts which uh, might be worth a bit of money on eBay. And so uh, I was thinking of if you've seen my other videos on the, um, oh, that's a warranty one, let's put you back in your home. Thinking of building a uh, media computer, and when I first saw this, I was like, excellent, because it had DDR3 memory. Um, it was built around about 2004 by the, uh, it still had the hard drives in, nothing good on there. Just uh, loads of family pictures of someone else's family. <laughs> but um, built around about 2004, um, upgraded to Windows 7 by checking the files and looked like it was originally an XP machine, so pretty old back in its day. So, there we have the fan, fan, PSU reassembled. As I say, I will uh, need to plug that in and check that's working, and fingers crossed, not changing fuses. But these things will just go pop, if anything. So, and that's a bit of difference to when it first had. So, we will come back in a minute once I found a cable. So, all reassembled and ready for testing. I found a power cable. <laughs> I had to take it off my other machine. I know I've got loads of these about, but where? So, plugged in and into a switch socket. Now, in the UK, we normally have switch sockets. I know in the US, if you plug something straight in, then uh, that's mains. So I've currently got the cable settled in and I'm sure there's no earth shorts there. I've tested it from the earth pin um, or from the live pin down to the chassis to make sure there's no shorts. Made up a little test cable 
hope you can see that. So what I do in like three parts, first we turn the power on at mains. Good sign. Um, there's nothing wrong. There's no no lives. Then we turn it on at the uh, um, PSU. Another good sign. Now, if you ever do this to a computer power supply, nothing will happen. No fans will spin and so forth. Very simple. On the 24-pin uh, connector, if it's a normal ATX, if it's something like a um, OE system build, like a sort of Dell or something like that, they might use different connectors, so just check on that. But different colours, blacks are negatives. Um, orange are 12 volt I believe or you got 24 um, not 24 12 volt and 5 volt in here plus a few negative lines as well but what we're interested in is the green line hopefully you can see that so you need to make up a little probe paper clips work fine if you've got a piece of wire hanging around I took a piece of wire and just tinned that so first you find the green just line that up Poke that into a pin, as long as the cable's not too thick you won't do any damage. And then we're poking into the black. And that's what we like to see. And we can leave that. Now this is interesting because once that's on all the time, and if we remove that, you should lose power. And your motherboard switch on the front of your case will be sort of connected to this in circuit. And this is what the... Uh, power supply sensors so uh, got a nice airflow coming out the back now which you want to always check for so you can feel a nice cool air obviously there's no load to this you know that's uh, that's good so now we can move on with the uh, mud wall cleaning That's strobing nicely on a computer. So no sparks. Not bad for a junk power supply. Hopefully it will pull. I wouldn't really put this into a prize new build. But it's certainly good to have a power supply uh, knocking about. So, <laughs> that was a bit long pull. I kind of thought about um, life in general for a moment. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully it will edit up fine. <laughs> you never know sometimes. I'm a duty paid. Thank you for viewing. Until next time, goodbye.